How's it going? And welcome to another episode of Billy Fishing in Scandinavia. Yeah. Today I'm on another West Coast Danish storm beach after flatfish, codling, weaver fish, and stuff. Yes. So I'm gonna walk you through the gear, the rigs, the baits, all that good stuff as usual. Okay. First of all, I'm gonna talk about the rigs. Both rigs are the Pulley X. You see them when I put the worms on. It's too hard to, to show with the camera while I'm fishing. I link the rig build for those in the description. There's three rigs in that video. And they're all there. So they all complement each other. They're clean ground rigs for flatfish coddling. Just change the hooks. You can fish live worms with these rigs as well. That's why I designed it that way. It's an innovation from the South African Dingle Dangle. And I made it this way so I didn't have to deep hook flatfish and I can still use worm baits and live worms. And I'll talk about why it works. This is my innovation. I call it the flatfish head. That's it there. This is a small size one Kamazan bent and clipped into shape and I file down the point on it so it doesn't injure the fish. If it does go down into its throat or whatever, it's very easy to unhook. Right, but the thing is with circle hooks, they only work properly with the bait below the circle. So the South Africans came up with the dingle dangle, which allows you to clip down and cast a bait with a circle hook, limiting damage and injury to fish. And since I was fishing for a lot of flatfish at the time, I was getting really frustrated because I'd also be picking up coddling at the same time. So I was fishing a one out and the fish had to work really hard and they swallowed the hooks quite a lot. And I was catching flatfish and coddling. So I decided to go this route here. So you can fish a smaller hook and still catch the codling and whatever and the flatfish without damaging them. And the reason why this works, and it's true of all circle hooks, they don't work well with the bait on the hook, they work well with the bait below the hook. Push it onto the hair, stroke, dingle dangle, like that. Now this hook down the bottom, which I spoke about earlier, is actually just a bait clip. And then you just put the head of the worm through the circle. This is a size one demon circle. Great all round size flatfish and whatever. And so what happens is this is soft and malleable. It's a much shorter bait than normal. And the flatfish have absolutely no trouble getting this into their mouths, right? There's not a long shank in it or anything else. They suck at it and it shoots into their mouth. So the bait is the first thing in and the hook is the first thing out. So when the fish goes to swim off, it goes into the corner of their mouths and hooks them. It's as simple as that. It works extremely well and I damage hardly any fish at all. Such a good move as far as conservation is concerned. So that's it there. I'll link the rigs, the baits, the hair, the lot in the description. Okay, yes. Okay, the rods are the Abu Hellbender HS. And this is what it fishes. That is complete rubbish. But you can cast a six ounce with it, maybe a seven. And the reels are the Diawell 7HT Millionaire. Boom. 30 pound four strand braid mainline and it's got a 100 pound braid leader. Both rods are the same. Both rods are fishing the same rigs, the Pulley X. And I'm gonna show you that now. They all clip down the same way. Gets the bait in behind the lead weight on all three of the rigs. The rig extends when it hits the sea floor. Fish is a wider area. And this is what it looks like here. That's an angel clip down the bottom. You can see the hairs there clipped in. That's uh, one of my cone leads. Yeah, I gotta refresh that video, I took it down. I didn't like it. So I'm gonna redo that video because now I've got this coating that I'm testing as well. I'm gonna make that video in the future. So now I'm gonna get this bait out into the water. Yes! Uh, you have to cast over 100 meters here just to get off the gravel. If you don't do that, your base will be untouched and you won't get any fish. And I suppose this is true of a lot of storm beaches. Surf beach is not so much. The fish will come in real close. So that was just a little lob. I always like to start that way. I've lobbed out too. I was likely to pick up some flounder. I'm also going to use some fish baits today to pick up some weavers. Hopefully they like fish more than they do worms. Yeah. So unfortunately for me, I'm having a great deal of trouble with weed at the moment. I never used to have this problem here in Denmark. But since the Danish boats were kicked out of the British waters and fuel prices have risen dramatically, they're forced to fish the inshore waters here. And when they're trawling for the flatfish, they cut the bottom up with their tow ropes and puts loads of weed into the water. And of course it flows in towards the shore. It makes my life a misery. 
Uh, we'll see if we got a fish on the left rod. I'm not too sure. Possibly we'll tighten up and then we check it out. Okay. Nice and tight. Doesn't look like there's any fish on it. We'll tighten up on the other one just to make sure it doesn't go down into the surf and pick up more weed. On this beach you can catch pretty much anything. I've had turbot here, I've had gurners, I've had dogfish, I've had plaice, I've had dabs, I've had codling, I've had weavers, I've had scad, I've had sea trout, whiting, eel pouts. Yeah, that's about it, I reckon. Let's see if we can get some damn fish for this video. So I'm gonna check out the left rod. It's been out now for about 20 minutes. So let's see what we got going. Doesn't feel like anything. So I'll show you the rig and stuff when it comes in anyway. So this is the rig here anyway. And the cone lead. That coating and stuff like that, when I'm happy with it, I'll do a video about that as well. So this is the rig anyway. I call it the Pulley X because it's got a pulley up the top and the bottom is like a Wessex, right? It's the best of both worlds. And you got the angel clip there and they all had a relay clip in the middle. And you'll see it in the rig build and it will make, probably make more sense anyway. And it's just the same as the other one. Apart from the hook size, this rig has got a size 1 and the hair is the same. So that's the rig anyway. So I'm going to get this rebaited back out in the sea and hopefully we get a fish for me. <laughs> so there's no fish in close, so I'm going to pitch this one out as far as I can. That's it, we we'll see if we get a fish this time. I really expected a lot more. Let's fish on, brothers and sisters, and see how we go. Yeah. There appears to be a fish on the right rod. It's only a small fish. But I'm going to try and improve my chances by moving the lead weight. This is something you do if you want to hook up, get double shot, whatever like that. It's not, not always necessary. If the tide is if the tide is strong, the rig will move itself and the fish with it and you'll just hook up anyway. But I'm not so sure that the tide is running very hard right now. I think it's just on high water and I'm waiting for it to fall. So I'm gonna pick it up and just move it a few feet. It's only a small fish, so I don't really care if I drop it. But if it uh, attracts a bigger and better fish, that's the name of the game. So we give it an old tweak and we see what happens. It's definitely not much good. If you can barely see the bite with braid, it's not much of a fish at all. Yeah, he's there, all right. <laughs> I feel him jumping around. Put that back in the pot. Wait for something bigger to come along. So the next bait out, I'm going to th throw a bit of fish on it as well. See if we can get a weaver or something. The weavers around here can get extraordinarily big. They taste like cod in a, in a very strange way, a very subtle way. Big cod, not, not small cod. I mean, they don't taste it very much, but like a uh, 10 pound fish or something like that. They have that good cod taste to them for some reason. I don't know what it is about them, but they're delicious anyway. If you get past the spikes and the poison and all the rest of it, they're extraordinarily beautiful. They scrap and they taste good. So i catch them all day long if I could. So we wait and see what happens. We're going to see what's on the right hand rod, see if I picked up a fish of some type anyway, when I move the run out. So let's go. Yeah, it's got a fishy. Hopefully the first of many. Hopefully it's something decent. A dab, place, ride him in on the wave. What have we got? Yeah, we got a fish. Probably a flounder. So first fishy, nice flounder. Here's a nice one. So we get him on our hook to back in the sea. I'll give us a look at him as well. There he is there. I'd say he's about 27, something like that. Shall we measure him? It's a rough old measure. <laughs> yeah, what is he? Oh, actually, he's into his 30s. He's 32 centimeters. It doesn't look that big. They come off the hair so so easily, it's ridiculous. Woo. It's always the same when there's loads of weed in the water, you just get a flounder. Swim! 
Goodbye. <laughs> nice, first fish, flounder. Better than a slap in the face with a wet cod. That's right, I said it. I made this in nearly all my videos, flatfish videos. One worm per hook, that's all you need. They'll find it, that's their job. Okay, nice. I'm going to uh, get this one out as far as I can, see if I can find myself something more interesting than a flounder. Not hating on them, just I've caught a lot of them and they don't taste as good as some of the other fish out there. So I'm going to get this out as far as I can and see if I can catch a place or something better. Oh, when the next rod comes in, I'm going to put some fish baits on it and see if I can catch something different. The hooks are bigger, it will work better with that one. Uh, generally the weavers, they'll go for the fish bait more than anything else. It looks like I got a nice fish on the left rod. It's bending nicely, I don't know what's going on with it. it could be a flatfish, a big flatfish. So, we'll see what's going on in a minute. Hey, <laughs> see if we get something decent. Okay, we're going to check out the left rod and see if we got a fishy. Yeah. Just gonna walk down, get tight in the fish, then start winding. It can be a, it's nice if you can see the fish. The undertow here is quite strong, so it's nice to be able to see the fish and the leader and see how you're getting on. It feels like there's nothing on that at all. What's going on? Looks like the fish has come off it. So we got it in, get a new bait on it, some fish bait. See where we're going. Tippering all jammed up. Thank you. Abu. Good job with that. So Whatever's on it came off, so hooks are too big for it. It's just a dab or something. So I'm gonna get some fish onto this and then whack that out. Maybe fish and lugworm. We'll see how we go. This is what I got going. A piece of mackerel that I cut with this, with, from the fish with a knife, just a strip like that. I'm gonna run up with it with the scissors. I'm gonna make two pieces out of it. Don't forget, the bait's too big, the fish can't get in their mouths. So then I've already put the worm on just the same as I would normally. I'm not a guy for using lots of baiting tools, just a bait needle will do me. I got fingers and hands, I don't need any of those gizmos. I'm just going to put this over the end there with a bit of skin. Just to help hold it. That's it, I'm going to whip the rest of that. I'm going to cut it short so the bait elastic doesn't interfere with the clip on the bottom. Whip it on. That's it. And hopefully, that will get me something different. Look at mackerel. That's it. Getting a pretty decent bite on the left rod. You please oblige. That's not it, that's a wave. So you get a bite by itself. Well, I'm going to lift into it. He's probably like buried himself in the sand and sulking a bit. Let's see if I can get him out of there. I'll move it a bit more, see if I can attract another fish to take the, the bait. Let's see how we get on. It's been out for a while now, 20 minutes or something. I know straight up whether or not there's a fish on it. I'm pretty sure there is. If it's a decent fish, I'm just going to bring it in. So it's not so. I'm just gonna move it a bit. See if we can get somebody's eye. I'm gonna put it up in the pod now. So we see if anything comes of it or not. Fishing ain't great, is it? No. So I just got a, a huge bite on the right rod. And it's a pretty decent bite, so. Let's see what we got. Hopefully it's just not a load of weed and a wave. But you gotta check it out. Yeah, we're in. Yeah, it's a decent fish. I think it's a weaver. Ooh, it's a big surf. <laughs> what we got? What is it? Come on, get up here. Ah, come on now, it was better than that. 
There's better fish than that. Uh, there's another fish anyway. Nice flounder anyway. Sometimes they make a real job of it. The flounder can be quite active. Give you a good old scrap. There's the, there's the hair. And there's the, yeah, nice and thick. Nice and thick fish. We'll pop them straight back. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, buddy. Ta ta. <laughs> right, another flounder day, it looks like. Ah, well, I'm happy for them. They're better than no fish at all, anyway. So we get that one baited up and back out again, yeah? So, this is the next bait. Just some lugworm. Not looking up my nose again, are you? Give that up. That's about 120 meters or so. See if that gets me something. Not a hell of a lot going on. There's not much I can do about it. So we will wait in anticipation for some fishy action. This is why I love placing dabs. There is absolutely no doubt when you've got a place or a dab on. It's dumb, 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 flounder. I mean, I know when they're there, I can't tell how, what size they are or anything else, but placing dabs, they always let you know what's going on. Flounder, not so much. We fish on fish heads and we see what we get. So I'm getting a nice bite on, there you go, on the right rod. And I'm gonna let him do his thing for a while. Oh yeah, that's gotta be a dab at least. So I'm gonna give that like five minutes or so. I'm gonna watch the bites. So yeah, we give that guy a few minutes and then we'll jump on him. Yes. And they're gonna take in the left rod and they're gonna see if there's a fish and change the bait. Amazingly, there's not too many weaver fish or any. Yeah, we got a fish anyway. Right on low water. Oh, he's pulling. Well, maybe it is a weaver. What we got? That's only a flounder again. Do the flounder. <coughs> Everything's in a jam as usual. So we got this guy unhooked. Back at the drinky. There he goes. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> That's a what? <laughs> so another flounder. Not complaining. Not complaining. So when the sun reaches the horizon. The session is over. While I'm here in Denmark, I hopefully will be fishing some other places than just the West Coast. You'll have to stay tuned for that one, but a lot of preparation going into the rest of the year. I'm not gonna say what it's gonna be yet. You'll find out that later, because I'm not 100% sure yet myself, but we'll see what pans out, what opportunities I get, what, what happens, right? So that's it. So when the sun hits the horizon, that'll be it for this video. And no matter how many flounder I catch, I'll still be grateful anyway, because after all this fishing, I'm out here enjoying the Danish countryside, seaside, stroke stuff. Yes, and having a great time. It's lovely and warm. There's not that many biting insects. <laughs> There's not that many fish either, but like, what can you do? There's not too many dabs this year. I'm very upset about that because I like to eat them a lot. Hang in there, fish heads. I might pull something out of the sea, decent jet. Okay. Yee-hoo! So, I've got time for one more cast each rod. I'm gonna bring them in. I think there's just flounder on the left rod. The bites weren't great, so I didn't film it. Uh, yeah, same with the other rod. So we see what we got. Two last casts. The sun's nearly on the horizon. Oh, first last cast. Does that make any sense? Who cares? <laughs> first last cast it is. We get the other lad in, get some bait on it, so you get a fish to end with. 
Over we go, grab this guy. This one's produced the most this today. Not that there's a lot. <laughs> Was it three flounder? Ah, we're in. Ah. Yes, what have we got? Please stay on, please stay on. There's a fishy. It's a dab. Little dab. He'll do. It's gone back though. That is illegal, but I don't know how the hell they get away with that. But. We did manage one dab for a session. Anyway, so we got him straight back. Wait. I mean, how the hell do you get anything off that to eat? It's a mystery. Goodbye. Hey, hey. Nice little dab. Out he goes. Get some bait on this quickly. Okay, last bait. is going down over the North Sea here in Denmark and I got a fish on first cast last cast rod <laughs> right so we got a fish on there and I'm gonna see if I can get him in on this rig there is a size 1-0 and it's a little bit big for the flatfish today normally I have no trouble with it at all but today I'm having a bit of bother yeah we got a fish Quite a nice one. Here he comes. It's a double. Yes, yeah, it's a double shot. <laughs> Two to end with. Uh, but I haven't got the other rod in yet either. What have we got? Uh, oh, it's a place. Nice. I was hoping one would turn up towards the end of the session. So it's a nice little place there. We've got to measure this guy. Food. It's two places. Yes. So. Put it, put them back. Nice place, nice and thick. There we go. What we got? We got 34 centimeters for that guy, and I'm not going to bother measuring the other guy. So the place actually turned up in the end. So he's also just. Can you believe it? The size of that hook. Anyway, you get that hair out of there. So there's two little plays there. Well, one little place and one okay, decent one. So we get those boys back as well. That's nice to end with, right? <laughs> I mean, if you had a mite, you would have got a feed out of this session, but I wasn't here to do that. And I don't eat the flounder, so. Goodbye, fishy friends. <laughs> Ta-ta! Nice! A couple of plays to end with. But I haven't finished the other rod yet either. So that's like three flounder, one dab, two place. I mean, it's come together in the end, right? Two place returned, all flatfish returned, all of them unharmed. All of them. Yeah, we get the last rod in and we see if we got a fishy on it. Eh, maybe not. We got a fishy. No. Well, you can't have everything. Okay. So that wasn't too bad. What, three flounder dab at two place. So I'm Billy, this is Billy Fish, and I hope you liked it. Wherever you are in the world, remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.